I Don't you know this area is strictly out of bounds to everybody except the tea lady and the brigadier's personal staff? I'm your new assistant. Oh, no. The brigadier's... Today I'm going to review Terror of the Autons. This is the first story from season 8 and it introduces the Master, Joe Grant and Mike Yates. It stars John Pertwee as the Doctor, Katie Mannon as Joe Grant, Nicholas Courtney as the Brigadier, Richard Franklin as Mike Yates, John Levine as Sergeant Benton and Roger Delgado as the Master. So this is from 1971. It's a four-parter, it was the first story of season eight, introduces the master and he'll be in all of this season, all five stories feature the master. That's really unique, that's never happened before. It's also the second story to feature the Autons, the one in Spighead from Spears, they're in this one and they'd later return in rows. It's written by Robert Holmes and directed by Barry Letts who's uncredited because he was also the producer. It had a working title called The Spray of Death. Robert Holmes and Barry Letts thought that the Brigadier could be like Watson, the Doctor could be like Sherlock Holmes, and the Master could be like Professor Moriarty. And Pertways states that this story is excellent and it was one of his best he did. And this story caused such a controversy that it was talked about in the House of Lords, about whether or not the programme was too scary for children. So I thought it'd be a good time to look at this story because it's 50 years since it was broadcast. Not only that, but it's just come out the whole season on Blu-ray. That's season 8. I did an unboxing video of it. So I thought this would be a good, um, good story to see what it looks like. The story was very coloured for DVD, so when you watch the Blu-ray, it does look a little bit artificial, the colours. And at times it does look a little bit blurred, but it's still a decent enough picture for a red coloured story. So it's an interesting plot about the master teaming up with Autons. There's a lot going on in this story because you, you get introduced to the master and he, he does seem a kind of hiss hiss villain in this. I am usually referred to as the master. Oh, is that so? Universally. Mm. It's not till later that you kind of appreciate his performance. Because in his later stories, there's kind of like a love-hate relationship with the Doctor. But in this one, he's, he, he seems just like evil. It's the same with the character of Joe Grant, with it being a first story. She hasn't kind of rounded the character. The character grows later, but in this one, she's just... She comes across as a bit of a, like a bimbo, to be honest. Later on, she has like a better relationship with the Doctor, but in this one, she's like making mistakes and stuff, so she's very kind of bimbo-ish. Hey, how the hell did your Grant get a job at Bloody Unit? She'd be better off working at Bloody Tesco's. <laughs> Mike Gates is introduced, just comes across as a little bit bland. He smiles a lot with Joe, so you know there's going to be like a like a romantic relationship between them. But apart from that, he was a little bit bland. However, this is kind of the first unit family type of story, where all the regulars are in one story, so it's kind of like a, a new beginning. Whereas the previous season, season 7, the Doctor had a different companion and it Although I love that season, it is a kind of different to what the Pertway era is. Kind of like a, a totally different look on the Pertway era, season 7. But season 8 where his era properly takes off. It's brilliant to say the Autons return. They're, they're an excellent villain. I don't think this story is as good as the first one they were in, Spighead from Spears. I think that's the strongest story. John Pertway's performance is strange in this story as well. He seems really bad-tempered. As though he's kind of totally sick of being earthbound on Earth. There is a reason why his doctor's so grumpy. And when he does get control of the TARDIS, his doctor's not as bad-tempered. But in this one, he's playing hell all the time. Hey, that bloody doctor's a bad-tempered bugger in this one. 
The bloody master's more sociable. Usually when I watch a Doctor Who story, I tend to kind of usually split in it into uh, parts. So like a four-parter, sometimes I watch two episodes and then another two. Six-parters are I, I nearly always split it in half. This one though, it was really fast moving and entertaining. And there wasn't really a dull moment, so I watched it all four in one go, no problem. There's a lot of kind of horror moments in this story, so no wonder there was a lot of controversy about it. I love the little doll that murders this guy in his house, that's good. Also, there's a black plastic seat that kills this guy who sits in it. Daffodils that spray out foam, plastic foam on faces. And, and one of the best bits, it's the end of episode two, is when the doctor's looking at this these two policemen in front of him in, in the car, him and Joe are in the back seat. And he like looks at them and reaches over and pulls his mask off his face and he's an auto on. Excellent creepy moment that. All these little um, scary moments. It reminds me a lot of the Tom Baker era. Like this story has a little bit of style of the, the Tom Baker early years. Like the first three years, Sinchcliffe years. You can almost imagine it being a, a Tom Baker story. But the story does have a, a few bad points. There's a silly Time Lord that pops up to tell the Doctor that uh, the Master's on Earth. And he's like warning the Doctor about the Master. It's like a really silly scene. He's got a top hat and, and he looks like a businessman. <laughs> and he like appears like out of nowhere. And it just looks really naff. Oh dear. Uh, don't go away, Doctor. There's some bad damn CSO back screen. Looks really tacky as well. And oddly enough, I found the music to be irritating as well. There's some really um, annoying music in this story. And some of the performances improve later, like um, Roger Delgado's Master's performance. He gets better playing the Master in later stories. Joe improves in later stories, definitely. Like, with it, with it being like the first story, they haven't like got to grips with the, the role yet. So it's a fast-paced story, brilliant era. And out of ten, I'd give it nine. Nine out of ten. It's turned out to be a brilliant season, season 8. I reviewed the demons and I, I thought I could have a lot of that as well. So what did you think, Bones? Did you like it? It was bloody brill, Phil. You can't beat the classic Doctor Who show. Yeah! Okay, everybody, bye. Like and subscribe and share. Bye, bye. I don't want to set the world on fire.